Hello and welcome. This is the World of Haiku. Released not long ago, July 22nd, 2022. Developed and published by Haiku Inc. And this one is, uh, well, I've heard a lot about it. All right. And it's making some bold claims here. Let me get through this so I can turn the damn music down. The commands and tools used in the world of Haiku can be dangerous and or illegal if misused outside of the game. This is not a full OS simulation. Uh, okay, epilepsy. Okay, good. Let's get that out of there. Okay, great. Finally. All right, so... Um, there we go. This is... I've heard, I've heard about it, and uh, it is making some bold claims. Uh, this game has no choice but to be held to the highest possible standards um, that I use on my channel when I'm evaluating these games. Um, if you've seen any of the previous reviews before, generally I group games into three categories of what I would consider to be rigor in terms of what they're promising and what they should deliver on. There is, at the lowest level, your hacking-themed games puzzle games. Now those games are basically going to use hacking aesthetics or cybersecurity aesthetics. Uh, they might appropriate terms and maybe some tools, but the points of the game is usually to use those to solve some kind of puzzle or or, or to have an adventure, right? Hacking themed puzzles or hacking themed adventure games, right? It's more about the story and not really about actually using any real terms or tools or, or, or doing anything like that. It's just kind of part of the, the look and the feel of the game. Then you've got your hacking simulators, and those are a level above that because they are claiming to simulate the experience of hacking, and so they should be using any, any terms or tools that they're using need to be used correctly right? Um, and then on the top of that, you have your games that claim to be educational. Your cybersecurity trainers, your education games, your uh, teaching tools, and so on. And to date, I have found three games that claim to be educational. One was Squally, and that was uh, teaching things like game hacking, assembly, and so on. Uh, there is Rogue Bits, which I actually played a little bit earlier today, uh, like Squally, teaching about data manipulation, reverse engineering, and so on. And then there was Threat Gen Red vs. Blue. All three of those games turned out to be good. They were good teaching tools. They weren't necessarily for beginners, but they were good. World of Haiku says... Entering the world of Haiku is the first step to acquiring the critical real-world skills needed to become a cybersecurity professional. This is the first and only gamified cyberpunk experience that teaches you real-world hacking skills and tools as you advance through the game missions. Now, even with the three games that were educational games that I liked, none of them made a claim like that. This is tagged as RPG, Hacking, Education, Cyberpunk, Futuristic... So this game will be held to my highest standards, and it better be good. An avatar, you say? They all... They all look like uh, crappy, generic, cyberpunk anime characters. I see no distinction between them, so we will just choose randomly. No time for... no uh, no Oh, no timers for beginners who'd like to take the time. Fun timers added to missions to add some challenge. Well, I mean, I guess we'll, we'll keep their, their default offering, right? They start us out on medium here, so we will start out on that as well. Let's see, let's see the game as they intended it to be played. The year is 2049, and the world has advanced into a highly digitized society where the lines between the internet and the real world have blurred. Giant megacorporations and covert government agencies fight for control in both worlds while freelance shadow hacker teams operate in the shadows of the grid. 
You are an orphan who has made your way into this broken world as best you could, living off whatever resources you found. Your only identity is your username and your designated IP address. When one nine two one six eight one and two. If you if you. <laughs> Okay. However, today is different. A mysterious file appears in your messaging system that is about to set off a series of the most unexpected events. Uh, okay. Well, we have a terminal, and we're clearly getting a message up here at the top. From Sorceress at G Corp. Text 192.168.1. One six seven sorceress grayskull. Uh, control space for next message. Okay. Um. Gungnir. greetings, Dick Nips. My name is Gungnir, and I lead the Cybermancers Guild of <laughs> Guild of Grid Runners. You may not remember, but we met a long time ago. I'm actually here to protect you. One of our operatives, Sorceress, has gone silent for a few days, and now she just sent you a message. Your life may depend on those clues. I'm going to help you out of this mess. Well, thank you. Something big is going down soon, and you're somehow in the middle of it all. The last thing Sorceress said to me was that you needed to find the ghost. I hope that makes sense to you, because it doesn't make any sense to me. After the crash of 41, Cybermancers reverted to a standard Linux operating system developed in the late 20th century. <sighs> Use of the all-but-abandoned system provided access to tools that grid AIs and terrorist factions didn't recognize, and against which they were more vulnerable. That's not really how... whatever. That's not that's not really how technology works, right? If it's a Linux distro, um, I mean, certainly certain OS versions can have vulnerabilities that are eventually patched out, but it would be an exceptionally rare occurrence for an older technology to no longer whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, maybe there's something I'm missing here. I'm 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 okay. It's okay. The the uh, at the at this moment I'll just say the writing seems exceptionally weak. Leave it at that and hope it improves. Because of that, I'll be giving you a crash course in hacking the grid using skills exactly as you would be in the twentieth in twentieth century Linux. Oh, I see. It's a pretext for for that. Okay. Well, it's still dumb, but okay. You need these skills to stay safe. Let's get started. Enter CD applications in the terminal to move inside the directory. A directory contains a specific file and folder types, and CD stands for Change Directory Applications is our target directory. Oh boy. I did it. Enter PWD in the terminal C where you are in your file system. PWD stands for Print Working Directory. I am really a hacker now. Enter ls in the terminal to see all files within your folder. ls stands for list. Type cd in the terminal to go up to the directory level. Okay. Not try moving it. Okay. So, so far, the only thing that this is teaching me is how to use Linux, which, I mean, hey, a game that would do that uh, would be great. I would recommend a game like that, because I, I get students who are just coming in uh, to the field of information assurance, and they've never used... I mean, they've obviously used Linux distros before, but they aren't aware of that. You know, like they have an iPhone or an Android device. But for the most part, as far as their desktop experience goes, is Windows-based. Um, and they're really lost on using Linux. So um, I would love a game that was just like, hey, this is a Linux trainer, but this isn't claiming to be a Linux trainer. This is claiming to be a game for real-world skills of cybersecurity professionals. That said, I do see that we have John the Ripper, Nmap is there, Responder, so, you know. Maybe we'll get to use those, but so far this is just a Linux trainer. 
I don't need to, to I honestly the number of times I use print printing directory almost never because you can see what directory you're in it says right there see it personal data looks like you have a file in your documents directory To read what's on the file, type cat file name where your file name is personal data dot data. If you're wondering, cat stands for concatenate. That means to read. It does not mean to read. To connect, concatenate, in fact, means to connect or to join different parts. It does not mean to read. But who am I to need a reference? Type man, command, which stands for manual. This keeps track of every command and how to use every cyber tool you come across. Damn right it does. Uh, let's try it now. Type man cd. App unlocked. Okay. Oh, you want me to... Okay. Um, all right, so we have an in-game manual here, which we already have in the terminal window, so I don't know why we need both, but that's okay. Chat's back up. Um, all right, well, it's good, that, it's good that there is a manual. I'm sure it will be useful for other things. You will find the manual will be an invaluable resource. Do not hesitate to use it. Despite my decades of skill, I never travel the grid without it. And lastly, use your notes application to record any information you find on the grid. It's located now in the taskbar. It's also located on the taskbar. Try to find it now. I've added your system credentials to it already. Okay. Rascal's notes. The recall. System preds. Your home system credentials. Dick Nip's IP address. God, it's... it's. Uh, we're so lucky that there are only 255... Oh, no, I'm sorry. 254 computers out on the grid. Uh, otherwise, we would quickly run out of these IP space. This IP space. Secure twenty forty three. Okay, excellent work. Now you have the tools to navigate the grid. I'm sending our AI assistant Rascal to work with you. I'm investigating new data that's come in, but I've given instructions to Rascal to guide you on your first reconnaissance job. Good luck on the grid. Mission complete. Skills. <laughs> you can level up. <laughs> you get your skills cd print working directory lists and concatenate how are those skills <laughs> uh, next mission all right hello there dick nips i'm rascal robotic artificial sentience cyber ally at your service okay only the A and ally is underlined and capitalized. I kind of feel like if they're going to use both letters, then they should underline both. That's very nitpicky, I know, but it threw me off for a second wondering where if there was an, an L letter, uh, L word coming up. Uh, I've been instructed to guide you on a first recon mission. How exciting. I'm excited. Whoa, hey, here we go. I've located and hacked in... Uh, okay, I thought this was a hacking simulator. If you're going to do the hacking for me, then... Um, I've located and hacked into the G Corp network, the origin of the message from Sorceress. You can see what username and device we're logged in as by typing who am I? I am Bianca you. Uh, we need you to navigate through your workstations to find the following find the owner of the G Corp domain, the owner's address, the website server address, the date when the website was registered, the organization that owns the website. Okay. I don't think we actually need to hack into them to determine any of those things. You will encounter file or directory names with spaces. When that happens, you will need to put them in quotation marks. Let's try it now. First, navigate to the documents directory. Uh, then, wait, you wanted me to not... Okay, we do have a tip. Nope, I'm getting a phone call. Okay, where were we? All right, so uh, LS. 
Contact email, diary entry, Bianca, house tasks, and workout log. Great, I see a file with a space in it. It's called house tasks. When we use cat on this file, we'll need to use quotation. Okay, well, I mean, use tab complete. Just... Okay, good job. If you're unsure how the cat command works, check your manual type. Okay, yeah, I... do I have to do it though? No, okay. Now using your navigational skill CD, PWD, LS, and CAT, find those five items, okay? Sweet. Then you can use that address to find the owner to corp, okay? Um Criminal gang activity has been everywhere lately. Almost everyone knows someone who lost their job, home, or went bankrupt. We hear about more and more break-ins and hacks every week. When will this stop? The four seem to be taking action and coming up with stricter laws and curfews. Uh, 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 okay, that's not particularly useful. Banana bread recipe. Likely story. Domain registration invoice. Let's check out another workstation for more information. Okay. Don't forget you can type. Okay, I I, I know. Do you do I have to do it again? E Hampton. Okay. okay. That's you not even to let me explore the full. This is this is it. Just the home directory. That's all you're going to let me do. Okay, then you're telling me that we should explore another computer and you're not really telling me how to do that. Or did you... Did you switch me without making that apparent? Oh, you did. I was a different user before. Okay then, thanks dude. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Response to cyber risk 249. How corporations are protecting themselves against cyber risk using cyber management frameworks. I feel like a game that's going to bill itself as being a learning tool for cybersecurity professionals should not be implying that using an old, out of date operating system in any way is more secure or better. I feel like that's not the kind of precedent that you want to send, but you know, hey, maybe it's just. Just me. Um, J.O. seems like an alias. Maybe giving you more information on it. It looks like there's one more workstation available. Okay, and now I'm somebody else. Just like that. No actual hacking required. The machine does it all for you. Uh, okay. Cat in my diary. Oh. CD, my diary. Ugh. Well, since I don't actually need to, uh, to to look at any of this information, apparently it just tells me when I've found what we're looking for. I actually don't have to go through... Not CD. Um, I don't have to actually go through and read all of these. I just have to open them up, so... Why are they out of order? Oh, because of alphabetical. Damn it.
why are the dates so weird? 2023, 2025. I mean, this is supposed to be years after that. Okay, that was a waste of time. See, I don't have to actually like read any of this. It just tells me when I found it. Okay. Mission update, okay. Good work so far. I have a few more tasks for you. There's chatter on the grid about something called the Zion Keys. Try to find data on that. Also, G Corp is working on tech called the File Explorer Activator. <laughs> See if you can find information on that project as well. Okay, you heard the marching orders from Gumnir. We need to explore the G Corp network a bit more. Why am I doing what he tells me to do? I don't understand. Why do I give a fuck what Gumnir says? Other than the fact that he's got a badass name. Let me suspect uh, inspect Sorceress's message. I wonder if she gave you access to a ghost server. That's like a hidden or abandoned server on a network. All right. So as an aside here, ghost server is not a term that I am familiar with, with my, in my many years of cybersecurity experience. I suppose it might be used somewhere. It does sound like a term that someone might use, but if so, it's not really a common one. So. Okay, let me try to access the IP address she sent, which of course is that private IP address, 192.168.1167 or something like that. An IP address is a unique numerical code assigned to a specific device on a network. It's not a code. It's numerical. Yeah, sure. But it's not a code. It's an address. It's an ident you could say an identifier. It's an identifier but not a code. Who is this game for again? Is this like for little kids? Am I getting my wires crossed here? What the hell? What's the, uh, what's the, uh, the rating on it? Um, genre RPG. Very positive reviews. I'm going to take a look at some of those in a little bit. <laughs> yeah we're gonna take a look at this in a little bit um is this but is this like for little little kids um i don't see there's no recommended age or rating or anything i feel like this is for little little kids This means Sorceress is guiding you to a specific device. IP addresses are used to identify devices on a network, but it's not the most reliable way to identify a device. IP addresses can change at pretty much any time. Um, it's just a way of identifying a device on a network at a given time. So that's it i used the username and password she sent you and that got us to a ghost server navigating through the server we uh, okay then um, sorceress at g skull oh i see i see you did the thing for me again you did the thing that this game is supposed to be allowing me to do for me again it's the tutorial level i'm trying not to be too harsh but i can't help it i'm kind of a dick um Nix is uh, okay. Whatever that is, I mean, I'm I'm guessing if it's important and I need to know it, that the game will just do its call out thing because uh re uh because um I have not actually needed to read any of this. It's, the game is just doing the ding and saying you found it like it's some kind of oh here we go. Please make sure payment is routed from this IP. Okay, well it didn't do the ding thing, but that seems like important information. 192.168.191. Of course, we're all in the same private subnet.
Oh, I already read that one. Yeah, that. Those IP addresses look important. This looks like promising money trail that we can follow. I mean, yeah, it is important, which is why when I saw it the first time, I knew it was important, but I had to go into the next thing in order for you to tell me that it was important because this isn't a game I'm playing. There's no game here. This is a typing simulator, just like all the other typing simulators I've played. And even hacking simulators that only build themselves as hacking simulators that are little more than typing simulators are ranked very low in my esteem. You bill yourself as a, an educational, gamified, cybersecurity learning experience. This is a low tier typing simulator, just like hacker evolution, just like worldwide hack and the, all of the other generic hacking simulator games that I've played that don't live up to that. I want to see something. This needs to get real good, real fast. Okay. Cause so far this is nothing special. It doesn't even look as nice as, as worldwide hack. It's got all this fucking shit everywhere. That doesn't mean anything. I got this chat window taking up a quarter of the screen. I've got my current tasks taking up another quarter of the screen. And I've got this tiny ass terminal window with a gigantic text taking up the rest of it. And then I have all this unused real estate for this cutesy goddamn cartoon fucking rabbit or something. I'm okay. I'm on the tutorial. Push on. Get good, please. Okay. Cause you're boring the shit out of me. I'm sorry. I get upset when a game bills itself as being educational and it's not because it's worse than useless. If, if that's the, the case, they're just drawing people in by thinking that they're going to the file explorer activator. Okay. Um, drawing people in by thinking that they're going to be able to use this to learn real things. And instead it's this, it's very irritating to me. Um, okay, sure. Let's grab this random binary we found off the server we don't know anything about and run it. I'm sure whatever happened to Sorceress won't happen to us, too. Hey! In the future, we still use File Explorer. Now we're in the Applications directory. Try moving up a directory by... Seriously? You're training me on how to use File Explorer? This is the same as CD. Nice. Now navigate up till you see all of the directories on the device. This is the same as executing CD documents. Apparently it's not because the game just crashed. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay. Yes, I know how File Explorer works. The goddamn cartoon mouse is doing all of the hacking for me. It's even copying the files I need for me. I'm literally doing nothing but typing CD and LS. It's all I'm doing. The next step is now to infiltrate one of the dealer's networks. Okay. The dealers are an organization of hackers on the net who know how to get things done. They are deal makers, middlemen, fences, smugglers, and information brokers. 
They are intimately connected to the pulse uh, in cyberspace with contacts and circles high and low. Blah, 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 okay. Many members operate either exclusively with the Cybermancers or Agenda 21, but many are free agents and deal with the highest bidder. Dealers operate from purity levels 2 to 4. What the fuck? Many members operate either exclusively with the Cybermancers or Agenda 21, but many are free agents that deal with the highest bidder. Dealers operate... So it's throwing purity levels 2 to 4 at me. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. You didn't explain what purity levels... Are. That means nothing to me. <laughs> Let's do... I do like my name, though. That does make me smile. Let's do this, dick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Look at my hacker skills. Look at my hacker skills. 52% in list. 37% in change directory. <laughs> oh, what's what's map? Haiku hack EOS operates at purity level six. I don't know what the purity level thing is. Uh, okay. I okay. I can't zoom in or anything. So there's these tiny little. Oh, okay, I gotta click. Mission 1A, the recon, the break-in. I don't know what... I can't do anything with this. I don't know what it means. There's nothing... Well, that's the next next mission. Okay. Okay. Um... World of Haiku is a beginner-friendly game for learning real-world cybersecurity skills. It's not. Beginner-friendly. That is... The, let's see. Is that actually on the description? Is that a first... Okay, it says first step. But this is not a first step to learning real-world cybersecurity skills. This is a first step to learning how the Linux operating system works. That's all it is. How the hell did I get out of here? The game is paused. Oh, there's the skill tree. I haven't gotten to use that. Okay, here we go. Times executed. 37. Oh, it's uh, it's the number of times I've executed is the percentage. So I wonder if I could just sit there and grind out these skills by just hitting up and enter. We're going to find out. We're going to find out when we get back into the game. If I can figure out how to get back to where I was. Manual notes. I can change my avatar, which causes me to question the importance of having the avatar to begin with. But okay, manual. Okay, how the fuck do I get out of here? Okay, if I press M, can I go back? I can't go back if I press M. Okay, fine. Then I guess I'll can I select it from here. Okay, I get to use ping. Curl. All right. Let's grind out that list. It was at 52, so should only have to do this for a couple more minutes. You've received the LS badge. It did work. It did work. Sometimes you just got to get into that grind set, you know? Put those headphones on, put on a little Steve Winwood. Because of the implication. Just grind it out. Should be getting close. 
Should be getting close. I can actually see. Let's go for rush. Cat. Oh, there's no... I definitely hit over... Oh, I did get the badge for it. Level 1. Just didn't get a notification. Echo CD. Well then. Okay. Looks like we're going to find out who got paid to do this part of the job. I'm getting a direct message from Decker. Decker is a member of the dealer's faction. She helps us cybermancers occasionally for a price. What's up, dig nips and rascal? Gunier sent me to help you guys hack this network. I recognize this as another dealer's network, but I'm not sure whose. My advice is to use the ping tool to make sure the network is accessible. The website is also the website is also accessible, so use the curl tool to view it. I hope that's helpful. Okay. Okay, you heard the lady. Let's use ping and make sure the network at this IP address is open for business. All right. So, if you're not familiar with the ping tool, if you are if you are uh, a beginner and you're watching this, well. First of all, our IP address is actually, at this point, different. So it's good to see that not everything is going to be in the same private subnet. Um, so it's 191, not 192. Anyway, if you are watching this and you are a beginner, um, if you're finding what I'm doing here to be confusing, I don't want to put you off of a good game that could teach you Linux. But, oh, there's the cat badge. It had just, there's only one, one, one heads up at a time. Uh, anyway, if you're interested in learning Linux, a game like this is not the best way to do it, okay? This is not even a good Linux teaching tool. Just get yourself Linux. It's free. Put it on a flash drive, uh, boot to it using a, the, uh, like, okay, so go to, um, go to get, get yourself a copy of Ubuntu, uh, whatever the current version is, the desktop version. Get yourself a copy of Rufus and a flash drive. Use Rufus to create a live boot disk. You just fire up Rufus. You target your USB drive. You target the ISO that you download from the site that's got the operating system on it. It will create a boot disk for you, which you can then use as a live boot system. So you can restart your computer, boot to the USB drive, and get into Linux. And then just use it. Just use Linux. Try it out. You're not actually installing anything, um, you know, unless you choose to. And if you do that, be careful. But just use it. Uh, using cat and, and LS in this fashion endlessly over and over and over again is not really teaching you anything. You don't need repetition to learn how to use LS, right? You just need to know this, this would be so much more effective. For example, if instead of the damn AI rascal doing everything for us, we actually use these commands to complete objectives instead of just endlessly, we don't even have to read the damn documents that we're catting. We don't even have to read them. It tells us when we found the right one. This is a, a very sophisticated scavenger hunt game that uses Linux as a backdrop and an aesthetic. So it's anyway, so that's, that's what you needed to do. Um, and if you're not familiar with the networking concepts that we're talking about here with the private IP addresses and the, and the ping tool, um, that's okay too. There's plenty of other better places to get started to get that information. Um, this game is not even doing that well. Like for example, ping is a tool we test if a device is active and if you can access it, that's only like half right. Uh, yes, we do often use ping to check and see if a, an asset over a network is reachable, but ping is not at all foolproof. And as a matter of fact, for security work, um, <laughs> it's not a reliable indicator. Ping uses the protocol ICMP, and that is a very specific type of connection that's uh, attempting to be established, a very specific type of request, let's, let's say. Um, it is entirely possible to have an asset on the network deny ICMP requests, but respond to TCP IP requests or other protocols. So that's why, for example, when we use a tool called Nmap to do port scanning, it will do, by default, it will ping first and then we'll run scans. But 
you need to be careful about the results you get back from that because many of the assets that you may be scanning might not be responding to ICMP requests. And so you need to take it with a grain of salt. So we do, yes, use ping to test if a device is active, if you can access it. Um, but it, <laughs> the, it also works the other way. Just because we sometimes do that, we have to be mindful of the fact that ICMP may not be available to us. And so ping won't work when other connections will. Um, ping might work and other connections are not possible. It might accept ICMP, but might have everything else closed. So, <laughs> oh, excuse me. So it's only half, it's only half right at best. All right. So we use ping. Uh, it's pinging endlessly uh, when you really run ping, you know. I mean, I guess, yeah, that's fine. It really depends on different things. Um, all right, so we stopped it with Control C. I already did this. Yep, yep. Go to the manual if you want to learn ping. I recommend not going to the manual in the game. Go online and search up ping. Now that we know the network is accessible, we need to use a curl to dig up some data. Uh, so let's say this is uh, uh, we'll use the data to hack further in the network. Curl stands for client URL, which will fetch data from the URL website and return. See, this is a different type of connection. Ping would be ICMP. Curl will be a TCP connection. Okay. All right, cool. I have highlighted a web address, catalyst.com, in the raw text that I think is important. Okay, well, thanks for doing that, I guess. Don't want to make me think too hard. I bet that URL resolves to the IP address we're looking for. You think so, rascal? Look, here's another link that points to a different location of the site. We can actually curl that link to see what's inside. Let's give this a try now by typing curl HTTP link with the link being catalyst. Can I, can I just copy and paste? Okay. I can, I hope. <coughs> okay. I can't control C V. Can I control C control C or V? Yes. Okay. No control shift though. Um, oops, that's cuddle, not curl. Freak, I know this guy. Okay. Catalyst is a member of the dealer's faction, but he's a scoundrel. He's known for creating some of the nastiest cyber viruses on the grid. How long have I been doing this? 45 minutes. 45 minutes I've been doing this. And no end in sight to the tutorial. Or is the tutorial over and this is the actual gameplay? Because I've been trying to like hold off on really blasting it because I've been assuming that this is just getting started, but before I can decode a username and password, I need one more piece of data. And I, well, come on, come on. Before I can decode a username and password, I need one more piece of data and IP address. See what else you can find on the website. Really? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to humor you. I'm going to humor you here and we're going to keep going. Because I didn't even have to do anything. I just had to, I just had to hit, I just had to hit the button. I pressed the up arrow. I went to the about, I changed it to services. I pressed enter and the game did everything else. For me. That's perfect. One, nine, two, one, six, eight, one, two, two. Of course, it's still in the fucking private one subnet. Of course it is. Control space to complete mission. Mission complete. Okay. 
I guess, next mission. We've made it into the local area network now. We call it LAN for short. This LAN is configured in a mesh pattern. That makes it efficient for each server to talk to all the other servers quickly because they are connected to each other. There is a weakness to the mesh network setup. If you hack into just one of these servers, you can theoretically connect to any of the other devices on the same network. <sighs> okay, I'm, I'm done. That's it for me. That's it for me. It, it wasn't starting out strong. It just got worse. And then it took a fucking nosedive with the, if you want to crack a password, you need a username and an IP address. It's, it's lost me completely. This game's fucking garbage. If you are interested in cybersecurity and you want to understand these real world concepts, do not play this game. It will not teach you those concepts. It will teach you the wrong things. Okay. And here's another thing. This, this is the first video here on the on the steam page look at this uh, when i saw this i thought it was pretty hilarious you know uh and i figured there's there's no way uh you know this could be one of those like mid 90s early 2000 uh before there was real good cgi they used live actors to record uh in these green screen rooms and like um uh, phasmagoria if you think about those kinds of games i can't remember what they called them i was like there's no way they're going back to this but there was a part of me that actually kind of hoped that they did um but i was like there's no way this is actual gameplay footage this is this is something else cybermancer agent cerberus just the terrible cosplay um did not then I got to these and I was like, okay, this is, this is probably actual gameplay. It, and it is. But the fact that the first one, two, three, four, five, six things on there are these live action videos that seem completely irrelevant to the game uh, was kind of a major tip off. I decided to review it because it said it was educational and it's mostly positive, right? That's the, all reviews, mostly positive, 51. Don't. Don't play this game. Unless, I mean, play it for fun. If you, if you like terrible hacking simulators, you go right ahead. You know, far be it for me to read on your parade. I'm not here to piss in anyone's Cheerios or anything. But if you are interested in cybersecurity as a field, if you are interested in, in hacking or any, any of the topics related to this, this will not at all teach you real world skills. Whether those are real world cybersecurity skills or real world hacking skills or anything else. Reviews. I like this, Mewtru. They need to guide you down a path, and they do this really well. I really like this. Let's see some of those reviews. All right. Not recommended. I decided to play this game as an absolute beginner. The game itself has been a blast. I didn't stop until I completed the campaign. However, I cannot recommend it because there's a semi-hidden subscription service that's not advertised but which prevents you from getting all the goodies featured in the trailer. Let me go into more detail. What is that? Immersive experience and engaging game dynamics? No, I did not experience that at all. Easy to follow tutorial, so it's ideal for beginners. If you, if you are interested in, like, baby's first Linux simulator, then you might get something out of this. But like I said, if you are interested in learning Linux, just go get Linux. It's free. It's free. Just Go get it. Start experimenting with it. It's easier than you might think, especially if you use like, uh, if you use Ubuntu. There's a GUI interface that's a really great uh, bridge between Windows and uh, and Unix systems. Just do that. The storyline is interesting, and the NPCs add flavor to the story. I didn't find that at all. All of the NPCs were just they just fell flat. There was there was nothing there. Um, and I hated Rascal because he did everything for me. He did the he did the fun parts of the game for me. Completing your missions missions feel satisfying as you're offered positive feedback through in-game badges and achievements. Well, yeah, well, every game these days has to have that little like 
you know, you press the you press the green button and you get a feed pill, rat. You know, like here's your here's your dopamine boost. Good job. Cons: You cannot level up your in-game badges beyond level one. Okay, that explains why I was at two hundred and thirty something and I didn't get any second level. There currently are a series of commands. Is this still in early access? No. No, this is a full release game. So why can you only level up to level one? If it were early access, that would explain it, but it's not. There are currently a series of commands that you don't even need to use to complete the game. <laughs> really? So they went through this trouble of making a baby's first Linux simulator and they didn't even use all of the commands. Uh, there's no real ending, only a cliffhanger. This makes the game feel short, almost like an early access. Well, that's disappointing. If you're paying for a full game, you should get the full game. Um, the trailer makes you think you get the full package, including the Haiku Job Connect, which adds the option to update your LinkedIn profile with the skills you've mastered. Oh, really? Really? This game is so fucking sure of itself that it will allow you to put on your LinkedIn profile that you are elite hacksaw with your cybersecurity badges from this game, it thinks that highly of itself? That is fucking insulting. No way. I don't see anything like that. Okay, I, I don't I don't see anything like that. But if that's the case, oh, oh, oh that's that's insulting. This game will not not bring you anywhere near competency. Nowhere near. And I, I mean, I know I'm saying that after only about an, uh, 45 minutes or so of playing, so that might seem like a pretty bold statement. I, I'm prepared. I'm prepared to test that theory. I'm prepared to put money on that. Just from what I've seen so far, there's no way this game will take you anywhere near competency. If I saw that shit on somebody's resume, it would not get them very far with me. <laughs> um... However, to access it, you have to pay for a subscription service. Okay. All right. That's why I can't see it. I don't have Haiku Pro. The game, it's, this is, no, uh, I, this is, I'm uncomfortable with all of this. I'm uncomfortable with the subscription. I'm uncomfortable with the job connect to your LinkedIn profile. Oh, I'm kind of, this is all, this all smacks of, uh, of modern gaming industry shit. Like, no, I don't like this. Um, Despite having tons of fun, the last detail makes me feel cheated. I'm really torn because the game was pretty cool, but an external subscription service to get all the features, really. Yeah, good, good on you, um, Threadeth. Good on you. Your instincts are good. I feel like you're right on, and for what it's worth, I agree with you. Um, and yeah, it, it, it does seem like it's an unfinished game. It feels like pay more to finish this product kind of a game. Game is interesting and quite fun, though I can't recommend this product as it has far too little content to warrant its current price. If the game was flushed out more and not just with the subscription-only service, I would definitely recommend it. And in, all in all, it feels fun. Uh, it does not. It's not. It didn't feel fun. It did seem like an early access game. I agree with those. Um, but no, this is. It was not fun and it was not educational. All right, uh, Chef McSex McSexy. I wasn't going to read your uh, review, but uh, because it says you got it for free, but it does say that you won it. So let's see. So I want a copy off Simply Cyber's Daily Threat Briefing. I actually planned on buying it that weekend, but luck was with me. Not a bad game so far. This is after eight hours of playing. How do you get nine hours into this game and you're like, oh, this is good? Uh, only thing I would change is the unlocked or information found. There's very little reasons. Well, yeah, exactly. It, you just, it's, it, it, there's no, it takes all of the puzzle out of a hacking puzzle game. It takes all of the adventure out of a hacking adventure game. It takes all of the simulation out of a hacking simulator, and it takes all of the education out of an educational cybersecurity game. What is this game offering that 
Hacker Evolution, uh, Worldwide Hack, uh, or any of the other shitty hacking-themed simulator puzzle games I've reviewed. There's no difference. It, it looks polished. It doesn't even look as good as some of those titles that I've just listed. I thought Worldwide Hack looked pretty. It just was all sizzle and no steak. This doesn't even have sizzle. It's got a cartoon AI mouse or whatever the fuck that's supposed to be. So yeah, the unlock your information found, there's no reason to actually do any investigating. There's no reason to do any anything. You're just you're just typing commands and waiting for the you got me to pop up. Uh add or stop and scan the emails information. Okay, yep. So it sounds like <laughs> these people enjoyed it but wouldn't recommend it. This person didn't enjoy it, but would recommend it. Chef McSexy, you are a confused human being. I hope you find what you're looking for. Okay, let's see what we got. Great way to start gaining some skills. with No, it's, it's not. It's not a great way to start gaining some skills with Linux. The best way to gain skills with Linux is to use Linux. Uh, this is not... No, this is not going to... This is not good. You, you, you have to pay money for this, and apparently you get shit for it. And, uh, I guess if you want to practice running LS and cat over and over again and CD, you could do this. Um, I agree. Hopefully we'll see more cybersecurity games on steam. However, one of the reasons I do this is because I believe that if we're going to see more cybersecurity games, they need to be good cybersecurity games. There needs to be a standard for cybersecurity games. Just because it's they slap educational cybersecurity, they slap hacking simulator on it, doesn't mean that we should be you know, grateful that there are games in the genre. It's not good enough that they are cybersecurity games. They have to be good games. It's the same reason why I became a teacher and I left uh, the private and public sector uh, cybersecurity to be an educator is because I looked around at the quality of the people that were around me. And I said, you know what? We are missing a lot here in terms of skills. We, we don't just need more cybersecurity professionals because we absolutely do. We need more good cybersecurity professionals. And so that's why I decided to try teaching. Cause I thought, Hey, maybe I can help with that. Um, so yeah, we need good cybersecurity games. Um, uh, let's see. Finish the game in seven hours. So this, um, uh, Chef McSexy was playing for nine. And this one was seven. Very fun and pleasant. I like the retro, st retro style. I mean, like the retro futuristic kind of thing. I'm not getting that at all, but okay. Um, big potential to grow. <laughs> grow in difficulty while increasing your Linux knowledge and quote unquote hacking skills. No, this, uh, I'm sorry. People are heaping praise on this game for no reason. Even their praise is backhanded. If the best thing you can say about a game is that it could be good, then it's not good. It's not good yet. If you have to say this could be good, then it's not good. Um, very fun and a great place to start or brush up your cybersecurity. No, no, it's not. Hard disagree, cargo we. Hard disagree. This game is a total blast to play. It's not like any other hacking game. This actually teaches you the re the read deal. Sorry, Nilla Wafer, the read deal. It's also super easy to get into. The game initially teaches you the basics and holds your hand for a while, but once training wheels come off, you feel like a total badass snooping through file systems, pivoting to different servers. Ah, maybe I should give it more time. Maybe I should. I mean, it has only been 45 minutes. But I mean, if it's 45 minutes out of a game that takes eight hours or seven hours or whatever, I'm good. I'm a good way into it. Um... Uh, pivoting different servers, cracking password hashes. Okay, I okay. If uh, there might be more to the game, and I'm just not there yet. This person recommends ga uh, gauge or ga gaggy, gaggy or ga gag three or something like that. In mission four A, I believe you have to use the SSH and enter a username and password. I believe to be bugged in my game. Do recommend. Does it make sense? Four missions down so far. Complexity is increasing. Okay, so there are four missions in. I'm on mission three. 
maybe if I stick it out just a little while longer, I will get to the end. and Or I'll get to something good. Um, I have been playing it for four hours, and I am obsessed. Okay. Sounds like I might just be, maybe I need to give it more time. Maybe the beginning is very dumb, but it gets good. Um, amazing learning experience for any. Is it, the review came in after 1.5 hours. They played for an additional 16 hours after that. Uh, you will not be let down. Hands down the best game I have played and best educational experience I could ever get. That's some high praise. That's some high praise in my book. Um, this is not a cyber sim, but a Linux command line starter guide. Yes. <laughs> Gil 972. My thoughts exactly. You, however, had 1.6 hours on record, and now I'm starting to wonder if I just need to give it more time. Um, if you know Linux, the terminal emulation is so very frustrating and limited. No tab. There is tab autocomplete. No control AE. Okay, that no, that I didn't see. No piping. No support. Uh, great, yeah, it. I mean, it is. Yeah, it's not even a fully fledged command line interface. Autocomplete is there. I I did find that it was buggy and sometimes it took a couple of taps or some prodding in order to get it to go. But it is it is in there. <clears throat> oh my God. 34 hours on record pure excellent that teaches the fundamentals of cybersecurity better than try hack me hack the box range force i and e etc wow that is very high praise and also i don't see how it could be from what i've experienced so far this game enforces learning via constant repetition that's not a uh, that's not a good thing that's a bad thing and excellent guidance throughout the game when needed if you are someone that wants to get a small taste of cybersecurity and actually retain what you learned, this game is for you. Pros. This has got to have been written by a developer or somebody who knows them personally. There's no way that somebody with actual cybersecurity experience said that this game is better than Try Hack Me, Hack the Box, or any of those other ones. And no way that a real person who really bought this game and played it, their first pro is that the dev team is responsive to bugs. There's no way. That's definitely like a dev thing to put in there. Like if you're having a bad time, we'll fix it. That's, I don't believe you. Fosachi actual, I don't believe that you're actually Fosachi. Cons, no ability to select a narwhal as my profile character. With, with all due respect. Oh, Eric, you and your team have done an outstanding job, and I'm thankful for the collaboration done between you and the one and only NMFB to introduce this awesome game. The Narwhals, thank you. Okay, so they, they are friends. They clearly do know each other. Um, it's one of two things, with all due respect to you, Fasachi Actual, either you are terribly biased in this regard or you're a genuine idiot, because this is the worst... This is the worst review I've, I've seen. This is not accurate at all. This is... See what they're doing. Adding, adding. Oh, and you, you even got your narwhal. Well, it's not what you know; it's who you know, right, buddy? It's not what you know; it's who you know. <sighs> As a cybersecurity student, I have to say I enjoyed this game. There are certain things that I think could be improved. It uses identical commands to the Linux system and introduces you to the Linux file system and how to navigate and traverse through the directories. Yes, that is a true pro but I don't consider it reason enough to buy the game because you can just go get Linux and try it. It's free and easy. Utilizes real network scanning tools and penetration testing tools. I did see that JTR and Nmap was in there. I haven't had a chance to use them then, even though I'm on the third mission and I'm almost an hour into the game. Uh, does not use fake programs in the game. But yeah, I, and again, that is a plus in my book. When hacking simulators don't use real tools, I don't like that. Like. Um, hack me one and two they have in-game analogs to like airmon air crack and stuff i don't like that and i don't see the point in it like why keep it a secret the stuff is freely available and it's not illegal to have them right it's illegal to use them illegally but it's not illegal to use them or have them so um i don't see the point in obfuscating it but that i consider that like a bare minimum thing 
Like that's just a bare minimum of what hacking simulators could do. And this game isn't billing itself as a hacking simulator. It's billing itself as teaching you real world skills, skills. There's no skill involved here. It's just, it's not educational. <laughs> um, the game is neural and the story seems pretty decent so far. Three hours into it. I'm, I'm getting the sense that the game might pick up after three or four hours. So <clears throat> this game teaches you the basics and then ramps up all bundled into a fun story. This game teaches you the basics, then ramps it, ramps it up all bundled into a fun story. Okay. Learning tools you can actually use in real life incorporated into a game is something I've always dreamed about. And now we have it. There are other better alternatives out there. Um, as it men, Oh, three, five, one. Um, I assure you, but if you didn't know about any of those better alternatives, I can see where you might think that. So you got, you got eight products in your account. So I'm, I'm, you, just guessing you don't have extensive knowledge of the hacking simulators that are out there. If you want a good hacking simulator, uh, go look at gray hack. If you want a good game that will teach you actual cybersecurity concepts, this ain't it. This ain't it. Shame. The campaign is so short. Can't wait for more out of a game that is not in early access. Review type 12 negative reviews. Uh, sure it lacks the most important tool the terminal there's no tab completion they must have added tab completion at some point because of all of these uh complaints oh that's right yes yes i you you can't actually traverse the file system i did notice that i did call that out you can only use cd you can't actually go you know you can't you can't even go cd home so like right now i'm here right now i'm here in uh my documents folder um, I can't go do that. I, I, I can't, let's uh, actually, let's go back here. Uh, damn it. All right. So applications, documents, and downloads. So I can go CD downloads, but I can't go, or can I, I can't go directory back CD documents. Can't do that. Uh, I can't even go to the root of my home. I can't, uh, yeah, so it's not even, uh, that's, that's, that's a fact. Yes. You don't even have all of the, uh, all of the capabilities of the commands that they do have in the game. Um, but this is also only 0 0.3 hours on record, which is about where I am a little, little less than where I am. Um, so yeah, this, this is fair. This is also in accordance with what I'm seeing so far in my experience too uh even if the game later on gets better at emulating a uh, linux terminal and all the tools doesn't matter if the first impression is sigh not another ripoff with a half-assed terminal that's exactly my impression i'm exactly where sa is right now uh bobo the game has about an hour of playtime currently really this is july 31st this was not that long ago. Um, pretty solid, glitchy as hell. Story just just stops on the second level. Well, let me continue. Okay. They they are apparently actively updating the game, but you know the game should be done before it's released, or or put it in early access, and then it's understandable. stuck on tutorial well raven i think this might just be not, not might just not be the game for you because i found it super easy um i played for less than an hour and decided that this unity game is too far separated from linux to stand up to his advertised claims yeah no shit okay so now i'm at a crossroads here um i tell you what i, I am going to do a part two on world of haiku because if a game takes three to four hours of an investment to become educational, that's not good. It should be educational from the beginning. But like I said, for baby's first Linux emulator, okay, fine. If it picks up after that, then maybe I will eat my words. But right now, this seems like hot garbage. 
and I would not touch it with a 10 foot pole. I would not recommend this at all. It's definitely not worth this needs to go in the bargain bin with uh, with Hacker Evolution so far from what I'm seeing uh, because they bill itself as uh, you know uh, 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 there's one thing other than improving the game that could be done to to make me think much less harshly of it. So if Haiku Inc if you ever see this stop billing this game as educational. If you just build it as a hacking simulator or a hacking adventure game, I would not be nearly as heated as I am. But the fact that you say that this is educational and it's not is what really ticks me off. But I will be back for a part two. I'm going to put at least five hours into this game, or I guess until I get to the end. At this point, I'm not really entirely sure how long the campaign is. Um, but I'm going to put some more time into this, and I'm going to see if it gets good. If it gets good, I will. I'll be eating humble pie. I'll I'll grab some crow. I'll eat it, and uh, and. I will heap praise on the game if it gets good. I am very confident, however, that that's not going to be the case. But I guess we won't know until we get there, so if you're curious about it as I am, come back for part two. It will definitely be the final part, one way or the other. <laughs>